Welcome into this new edition of Beyond the Arc right here on High School Cube News. Brian Shimino with you once again with Michael O'Brien of the Chicago Sun-Times. And Mike, let's kick it off right away. Was there a team that had a better weekend last weekend than the Stevenson Patriots? Number three, getting revenge against Zion on Friday. You had Cashaw, Brunson, Matt Johnson all going for over 20 points. And then the very next day, blowing out Bennett Academy, Brunson stole the show again, 39 points. The Stevenson Patriots look like they're on a mission. Yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any question right now that if you took away, which you won't, Okafor or Alexander, Stevenson would clearly be the best team. They've got the best pieces. The question is going to be, if it winds up there in the long run in Peoria, can they overcome the size? And that's kind of the issue for Stevenson. When they were beat, it was by Zion Benton and the size. Omara got his, Bennett didn't have the supporting cast to take it over. So it's going to come down to maybe the big question of the season is going to be, can Steven overcome the big men of Curie and Young if that turns out to be the state final? So it was a great weekend for Stevenson, but an even better week for St. Rita, going 3-0 and with wins over Marist, St. Francis, and De La Salle. They take a huge jump all the way up to number 10. Yeah, you know, a lot of teams... A lot of the mid-level teams had losses. And now you start to look at St. Rita. Their record is no longer the, you know, ugly 6-5 and five or 7-6. and six. They've beaten some area teams soundly. They've got Charles Matthews back healthy, which is great to go with his brother Dominique and Vic Law. And the loss to Loyola doesn't look so bad anymore with what Loyola's done to everybody else. So I thought it was a good week to, to put St. Rita back up where they deserve to be talent-wise, which is in the top 10. And would be in the wrong not to talk about Mount Carmel. A big jump in the rankings. Wins last week against Fenwick and St. Joe's. There might not be another school playing better than them right now. No, and it's no surprise. Mike Flaherty, the Mount Carmel coach, is one of the top two, top three coaches in the entire state. He's that good. He's a longtime veteran. His teams always always are playing great the second half of the season. It comes to February and Flaherty's got his team rolling. David Nichols, the Mount Carmel guard, has something like six or eight games in a row scoring more than 20 points. He's a definite all-area contender. That team is one to watch for sure. Speaking of all-area contenders, we're talking about individual performances last week. And what about Evan Boudreau up in Lake Forest? Tuesday against Warren, 27 points, 17 rebounds. Huge win Saturday at home against St. Vyer in overtime. 40 points, 20 rebounds. Yeah, it was amazing. We, we both watched the Warren game. Kind of the impressive thing about that was he identified real early that if he just went down low, no one on Warren could stop him. So Boudreaux wasn't out chucking threes or trying to hit runners. He went down low and he just dominated Warren. It sounds like he probably did the same thing against St. Viator. It's really good when a player knows what he is and, and how he can best help his team win, and Boudreaux definitely does that. And some interesting games to look at this weekend. Tonight, Tuesday, West Chicago versus Kalen, two schools you wouldn't normally see. Yeah, I, February I like to go out and see some different teams, some different players, and I've been reading about John Conchar, the high scorer for, from West Chicago for three months now. So I'm excited to finally go get a look at him. He's starting to get some D1 interest. He's a really interesting player, and it'll, it'll be fun to see what he's got. And this Friday, it's the last regular season game for the Chicago Catholic League before their inaugural tournament. We're talking Loyola versus St. Joe's. Yeah, this is an interesting one because... St. Joe's has all the talent to beat Loyola. They have the size to beat Loyola. We're going to find out a lot about St. Joe's as a team. You know, they're young. They're juniors or sophomores. If they're kind of gelled together enough as a team to handle Loyola, because that's what it's going to take. A rare mid-suburban league matchup to look out for. The number eight friend Vikings put their undefeated record on the line versus newly ranked number 25, the Conant Cougars. Fremd survived Evanston on Saturday. That was a big test for a lot of us. Evanston's not a great team, but they're a really good team. And Conant hadn't played even a lot of really good teams, you know, from outside the MSL and stuff. So that was a big win. That proved a lot for Fremd. But this is going to be an interesting conference test on Friday. I'll be there. Conant got in the rankings. They're on a roll. Tom McCormick's another great coach. He's got that team playing well. You know, Conant only lost to Viator, I think, by five much earlier in the season. So they've been solid all year. And if Fremd can get this one, there might not be much else standing in their way of an undefeated regular season. And on Saturday, you have the Caneland shootout, and that's going to be headlined by North Chicago versus Larkin. Yeah, that's a great game. I mean, two teams that love to get out and run. They got athletes. That's going to be really fun. Kurt Hall from North Chicago is just putting up some absolutely amazing numbers this year. I think Amos Mays, Javaris Amos Mays, said maybe a little bit of a disappointing season. I expected some more from him. They're going to need him to really make a push if they want to make a run in 3A. And Larkin is just tons of fun. You got the freshman, Christian Negron, who's one of the really dynamic talents. And then the backcourt of Kendall McCollum and Derek Streety. They're a team that hasn't really beat the great teams they've faced 
so far this season. They've beat all the good teams they've played. So this is going to be a nice test to see if Larkin can really make noise in 4A. If they can beat North Chicago, they'll prove that they're an actual contender for Peoria. And the Public League Tournament is well underway. Check with High School Cube News later in the week for a special edition of Beyond the Arc as we preview the quarterfinals, semifinals, and championship next week. And also check back the MVP segment with Beth Long. Talk with Lawan Pipkins of Bogan right here on High School Cube News. For Michael O'Brien, I'm Brian Shimino. We'll see you guys next time.